Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today talking about this, and this is a relatively unusual item as far as I'm aware. It is in essence a New Zealand onward pack from the 1980s. We'll get into more details of exactly what this is in just a minute, or what, what it's believed to be. I first of all, I want to say a big thank you to Zane van Bommel, who sent this to me to have a look at, talk about, and add to the collection, and it's a very interesting piece to have from that point of view. And I want to say also a big thank you to Robert McKee, who is a historian who's investigating and researching New Zealand uniform uh, equipment, load carrying equipment and so forth, uh, and is producing some useful websites detailing that. So very much appreciative to him for providing much of the information I'm going to relay in this video. So what he believes this is, what Rob believes this is, is a civilian derivative of the Onward Pack, which was developed for the New Zealand military in the 1980s. And it was produced on the civilian market, ostensibly as a private purchase item uh, for civilian use as well, potentially, but suitable for military private purchase. In terms of the development of new military kit, it wasn't really successful, the Onward Pack, and we're going to get into a little bit about that, uh, talk a little bit more about that as the video progresses. In terms of overall design, it's quite a large pack. The volume for the time is relatively large, and it's modular, so we have one external pouch round on the far side here, which we'll see in more detail in just a minute. The original design involved having several pouches. I only have one, but several pouches which would attach to the outside of this, which could alternatively be carried on the belt using belt loops on the back as a light belt kit. So you could carry the set of equipment together on the rucksack, and then you could carry the pouches on a belt as well if the whole load wasn't required. So you have a main body here, which could be used to carry much of the soldier's kit, cold weather clothing, could also carry a radio in here potentially, at least with the initial military design. And you have a lower compartment here which fastens with a zip, you can see that underneath here. Forgive the mannequin creaking, uh, that may come through on the microphone. This is for carrying uh, sleeping gear, so you can carry a sleeping bag in the bottom here, as far as I'm aware. The front closes with two straps coming down here, as you can see the flap just sort of folds over on itself as we have here. I'll open this up in just a minute and you can see the, the fixtures and fittings underneath there. Obviously you could attach pouches. This one here is attached to these two straps coming around the, the body of the rucksack, the body of the pack that carried around the side there. You could, in theory, attach another one of those here, one on the front. So it's quite modular in that, design, in that regard in terms of design. There are various plastic D-rings at different positions on these straps here, which would of course allow you to attach an external load to this. You could easily strap things onto it. So looking at the back there, you can see the various straps and so forth. If I just open up the flap a little bit here, you have these plastic, uh, grey plastic friction buckles here. Open this up a little bit. I won't pull them right out, but just loosen them off so we can have a look. Raise the flap up and have a look underneath here. You can see how this comes to an end here, that the top strap coming around here with this set of D-rings. And then you've got this very long throat with these stiffening pieces there, which folds over and straps down in place. The straps are all finished off with these crimped tips, similar to US practice. So they tighten down there quite nicely like that and holds it all together. These are loose coming up here over the top. So you could in theory put these straps over a load on the top of the, the, uh, the pack as well if required. And they pass through these loops on the top there, as you can see. Some details we won't be able to see on the mannequin. Of course, we'll have a look at this laid out on the blanket as we normally do to look at some of the other details. That, for example, there is a window at the top here for putting a name tag in there as well. So that's the front or rather the back of the pack as we look at it here. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. We'll have a quick close-up look at the label found on the front of this. And as you can see, there is a number at the top there which begins HM, not clear, Z, 64 stroke 71 stroke 78779. And you have the designation in the centre there, Combat CCFS-75, or 76, I think, actually. And then you've got military barrage cloth and the code beneath that, which I assume is the designation for the material this is made from. I'm not sure of the significance of this label on the front, uh, but it is here, and I just wanted to make a record of it from the video. Perhaps a viewer could provide some further information. i greatly appreciate it if anyone can shed a bit more light on this. Looking at the side profile here, you can see details of the side pocket, and this has loops on the back which attach it onto these two straps. And then this closes with a single strap and buckle in the centre there, in common with the rest of the design, that all the buckles and so forth are standardised. 
So again, you have the metal tip on the end there. Relatively small side pouch. As I say, these could be removed and carried on the belt if required. That was the idea anyway. And we only have one of those in this instance. As I say, normally I believe you'd have another one on the other side, one on the front potentially. There were a variety of different ways these could be attached. Obviously it's very flexible due to its modular design. You can also see the shoulder straps coming over the shoulder here. You can perhaps see how they attach on at the side here. We'll see more detail of that obviously when we look at this laid out on the ground. But there's a buckle uh, adjusting a strap here which runs up to the top of the pack and the shoulder straps then attach on a little bit lower down. You can see in the side profile here we have a triangular piece of nylon here where this attaches on and the hip pad coming around and we'll see the waist belt and so forth when we look at the front of the mannequin in just a moment. So you can see we have the shoulder straps coming over here. They not only adjust in at the top here, but they also adjust obviously in terms of length with buckles here and the straps again, the metal tips on the end. You have this set of eyelets quite high up on the shoulder straps here. It may be this is sitting a little bit low down on the back of the mannequin. Possibly you could have threaded a cord through these as a chest cord. I don't know what these are for. So I'd be interested to know from uh, anyone in the comments who can provide that information, that would be good to know. You obviously have a waist belt and hip pads here. The buckle for this is broken, as you can see there. And that was one of the major problems with, with the onward pack. We'll talk a little bit more about the problems with this in just a minute or two towards the end of the video. One of the problems was that the plastic fittings were rather brittle and didn't uh, hold up very well in military service and that's ex exemplified by this buckle on the waist strap here. Much as I, I believe this is a civilian derivative from the trials versions that were used by the New Zealand Army and the New Zealand military, this as I say is, is a, a problem that existed with the trials versions as well was the brittle plastic of the various plastic components. So that's the front of this obviously looking at the shoulder straps and so forth. We'll turn this around have a look at the other side and obviously that will show you the straps running around the side which in this instance attach this side pocket. So looking at this side of the pack without the side pocket attached you can see the straps here which attach the side pocket on the other side. These of course do mean you could carry an external load on the side here as well without having the pocket there. More D-rings as you can see and you can see the zip here the double zip so you've got two zips there. You can zip this open and close the bottom compartment there for sleeping gear. You can also see again the strap coming down from the shoulder strap there, fixing onto this triangular piece of nylon here, various other straps and buckles down the bottom there to allow this to be properly adjusted in, to allow the hip pad to be adjusted in and so forth. You can also see a zip here and we'll see more detail of this and we have a look at this as we're going to now laid out on the blanket you'll be able to see more detail of exactly what's going on at the back of the pack here and we're going to have a look at that now. So we'll have a look at some details here that we couldn't really look at with this on the mannequin. As you can see, it's quite a bulky item to try and fit in shot here, which is why I wanted to look at this on the mannequin in the first place. We'll have a look here, just a few of the details we've already seen. You can see the straps there coming down to secure the main flap. We obviously have the straps coming up there to secure onto those, those buckles. You can see the label here in the front, as we saw in detail previously. You can see where that's attached at the front here. Obviously the lower part here, the lower compartment with the zip. You can see that a little bit more clearly here perhaps. You can see the, the uh, pull tab on the zip there around the side as you can see. The nylon cord. And you've got obviously these grey plastic buckles. Obviously the window at the top of the flap there for attaching a name tag. And as you can see here, that's stiffening around the opening. If I fold that back, you can see the straps across the front here, as we've already seen. You've got the little plastic D-rings here for attaching extra straps and extra load. And obviously that side pouch there, which you can see here, the loops on the back of that for attaching it on using these straps. And as you can see, it's completely free to move because of that. But you can see if I turn this around here, the straps on the back there, which allow this to be attached onto the main straps, the straps which pass around the body of the uh, the pack here. If I fold the main flap in here again, you can turn this over and the main point of having a look at it here is to have a look at the back, the details here. You can see the hip pad here and a little bit better detail of how that attaches on. And again you have the the D tips on these sort of American style crimp tips on the straps there. But you can see how this attaches here with two straps for adjustment and the plastic buckles which are used commonly throughout the design. You have these ones on the side here which look like they may be for attaching a separate strap around the waist 
to help uh, secure this and stabilize it, but I'm not sure on that. But there are these separate buckles here on the side with no corresponding straps. The shoulder straps attach with these triangular sections of nylon here to, so they come up at the right angle and you can see how they're adjusted in. We saw this when it was on the mannequin. It's the eyelets on that piece of nylon there. You can see how the shoulder straps attach at the top here. You can see the rivets there. I get the light in there attaching these and obviously the carry handle at the top there and how the shoulder straps attach at the top. So you've got some adjustment there as well with these straps. And then inside, if we unfasten this Velcro here, at the top there's a Velcro tab on each side and a Velcro strip at the top here, like that. And then unzip this back section here and the back opens up. And inside here, we have a pad, which is simply formed of a folded section of foam rubber, basically a foam sleeping mat material. And you can see that's folded in on itself. So if I remove this all the way, a little bit annoying to slot back in, but you can see how this folds out, not into a particularly useful length, but you know, if you wanted to you take this out and use it for sleeping on, it's not a particularly useful length, but uh, it's, it's basically what you end up with is a, is a mat. And you can see how that folds out there. And you can see the, the pocket for this at the back here, if I pull this into shot here. And I'll try and slot this back in through the, in through the camera. It's not, it's not that tricky. Stand this up, it might help. So that just slots in like that. Slots in at the top here as well. I can squeeze this in there. That's it. Like that. And then this just sits back into place and secures with the Velcro at the top there. So that's the padding at the rear is, is formed by that folded section of uh, foam rubber. And that's basically what I wanted to show looking at this sort of laid out on the, on the blanket here is the various features we couldn't really look at with it on the mannequin. Uh, but that's the, the, the way this is padded at the back is with this, this piece of foam rubber, interestingly, as opposed to having padding in specific places or sewn in padding, completely removable pad of foam rubber there. There is one other label I want to look at here, and that is the manufacturer's label up in the throat of the pack. And you can see here, manufactured by Hallmark International Limited, private bag, Frankton, New Zealand. And this is the manufacturer of both the onward pack made for the New Zealand military, the, the designs of onward pack made for the New Zealand army, and also this version as well, which as I say, we believe is a civilian derivative of that design. So the onward pack was intended as a replacement for the New Zealand version of the Australian field pack and it was designed to have a greater carrying capacity to be able to carry the cold weather clothing, cold weather sleeping gear necessary for New Zealand's climate. Why was it not successful? We've already mentioned the plastic fittings being brittle and not really fit for purpose. That's something that could have been sorted out, could have been fixed of course. One of the other issues with this, it, much as it is relatively comfortable to wear and I have tried this on with quite a load in it and it's not uncomfortable to wear, a lot of sweat builds up on the, the wearer's back and this causes serious prickly heat in tropical environments. And this was a serious problem that was never really rectified. And another uh, reason for this not finding favour was that as an interim measure, the New Zealand Army actually introduced the Medium Alice pack from the US and this proved to be very popular and basically ended up being a standard issue bit of kit. Or, or at least a large scale issue bit of kit. So there was no real need for the onward pack at that point. Its purpose evaporated when something else was found that did the job and was popular. So this, uh, well, say the, from the development for the New Zealand military, a civilian version was produced. It's believed that's what this is intended to be used by the military if required, if, if privately purchased, but uh, it didn't pursue as an issue bit of kit uh, beyond sort of trialing and, and various uh, experimental versions. That's what uh, I've been, uh, that's the information I've been provided by uh, Robert McKee. So thank you very much again, Robert, for advising me on this, much appreciated. It's very nice to have this in the collection. It's an interesting example of a rather obscure bit of kit. So nice to have an example of one of these. And as I say, it's a rather interesting design and feeds into my interest of the development of load carrying equipment, particularly packs and rucksacks around the 1980s is when a lot of newer designs were coming into into play and this is one example of that so if you found it interesting looking at this and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing 
please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.